Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Steve Larson and you're listening to Secret MLM Hacks Radio. So here's the real mystery. How do real MLMers like us, who didn't cheat and only bug family members and friends, who want to grow a profitable home business, how do we recruit A players into our downlines and create extra incomes, yet still have plenty of time for the rest of our lives? That's the blaring question and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Steve Larson and welcome to Secret MLM Hacks Radio. Guys, I always feel like um, life's too short to be boring or not excited, so uh, hopefully my little cheesy intros are okay with you, but uh, it's just that I just don't want to, you know, life's too short and uh, and I, I just believe in grabbing it by the tail, so <laughs> grabbing it by the horns, so. Anyways, uh, guys, I hope you're doing fantastic. A lot of stuff's been happening over here. I've been creating my offer. I've been building stuff and putting things together for the actual launch of Secret MLM Hacks, uh, the actual program that will help you to auto-recruit people into your downline. I've already been using it. I've actually had several people already been using it, and it's been working, uh, which is very exciting. So I'm excited for you guys to have it uh, once it leaves beta. So just so you guys know where I am with the actual launch of it. Um, like I said, it's in beta. Steven, why don't you just release it right, you know, right now? Please give it to me right now. Well, several reasons. Number one, anticipation is a great tool. <laughs> no, but for seri- uh, for real, I almost said for serious. <laughs> Been watching, um, I can't remember that movie. Uh, anyway, whatever. But uh, um, anyway, the, the reason though is because um, Anytime I go launch any kind of product online, like you said, like I said before, um, my background is in uh, direct response and internet marketing. Anytime I launch something online, you know, it's much like a movie. Uh, you know, the last movie I saw with my wife was uh, Wonder Woman. You know, and she and I went and we watched. Uh, Wonder Woman. We, we go to the movie, but before we ever went to the movie, we heard about it. Right? We heard that the movie was happening. How did we hear about it? Well, there were movie previews, like six months in advance right? Huge, huge lead time for everyone to hear about it and hear the buzz, right? And it's the same rinse and repeat, uh, rinse and repeat Hollywood model over and over and over again, right? And so before my product comes out ever, I always want to create some buzz. I want to make an event out of the launch. I want people to understand, hey, this is cool, right? Pay attention. And so what I've been doing over the last little bit is I made a list of the top 100 MLM influencers, period, regardless of the MLM, regardless of anything else, regardless of their level in their MLM, I want to know who the top 100 MLM influencers are. And what I did is I went and I uh, I wrote a letter to him and I decided that I would tell my story. And so I went through and I told my story. And uh, in fact, it'd be kind of cool, you know, uh, let me let me read this to you guys real quick here. It's actually, you guys are probably going to recognize some of this real quick. Um, uh, so I'm going to read some of this real quick just so you guys know what I sent to him because what I want to have happen is when I launch this thing I want to have these huge influencers go out and say you know what Steve Larson's product's so cool I want to go ahead and I want to ask my downline to use it also you know what I mean but you don't just walk up to some girl and ask to marry him on the first day right it's the same principle you guys I want to develop a relationship with these people I want to know that I really do care about them I want to solve legitimate problems for that individual so that they like me right so that they go out and uh, and when I launch the product that they're like hey you know I, I do want my whole downline to see this I do want everybody to go check this out I do you know and, and so it's all about creating value it's all about relationships it's all about but I I don't just do it over the phone. I hate talking on the phone. Just that's a personal preference of mine. Whenever people are like, hey, can we talk on the phone and chat about it? I'm always like, no. Like That's why I built my system to auto-recruit people. Uh, and it, again, it's not that I'm like anti-people. It's not that I'm totally anti-social. It's not that I am taking the person out of MLM, You know, taking the human element. That's not it at all. It's just that's the I've not you know I've chosen to not take people in that way. You know, I'll do I'll do video conferences with tons of people at once, but going one on one, that's not why I built the system. That's not how you know that's not the reason I built it. And honestly, you've probably felt the same way, right? Do you do you wish <clears throat> there was a um, a very is very famous. Um, internet marketer, his name's Russell Brunson. Uh, I'm friends with him, and one day he said, he said, the difference between going from six to seven figures is actually not that big of a mind shift. Um, it, it's not, a, it's not a matter of working more hours. It's not. Uh, he said it's actually a, a mindset shift in in focusing on okay, instead of just selling one person, 
at one time, how can I sell a ton of people at once, right? That's how you do it, right? You got to reach masses. You got to, it's got to go critical mass. It's got to go big, you know? And I'm not saying that like, you got to take your product and just go blast it out all over the place. There's certainly ethical, cool, awesome, value creating ways to go do it, right? But that's the reason I built the system that way. That's the reason I don't really do phone calls that much ever. Um, phones just freak me out in general. I'm not a good guy on the phone, <laughs> which is funny because I used to be a telemarketer. Uh, but, uh, Anyway, so I've been going out to all these Dream 100 people and I've just been trying to create a relationship with them. Uh, That's what we call them. I I call them the Dream 100. Um, The concept comes from a book called Expert Secrets and another book called Dot Com Secrets. Fantastic books. Um, But uh, uh, all I do is I go through and I made a list of all the top 100 influencers and I I could send an email to them. I could go and send them a tweet. But everybody does that. I get... I get probably 20 a day right now just in Facebook, not including texting and phone calls and Voxers and Skypes and, you know, just just on Facebook right now, probably 20 a day. And I can't handle it, right? It stresses me out. And so I don't want to do that to these guys too. So what I decided to do is I went and I wrote a letter. And it's a series of about five or six letters that I'm going to be sending out to them. And I just sent the first one out um, a little bit ago. Uh, and, uh, and then, you know, then a few weeks later I sent the second one, then a few weeks later, which is where we are about right now. I'm sending this, the third one, which is about, about right now. And, uh, um, in a few days here, which is awesome. Just, we got to finish the packaging part of it. (laughs) But anyway, this is what the first letter said. It said, it said, Hey name, uh, you know, and I personalized it a little bit too. I didn't want to just rinse and repeat for everybody. I wanted to actually create real value for these people. I said, Hey, I can't believe I'm writing this. Uh, I'm Steve. This is totally from left field. Just wanted to pick up the mic. And what I did is I, I didn't just want to send a letter either. I wanted to be a bulky package. I wanted to be something that causes curiosity. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to look at the package and go like, Oh, that's different. Who, who's this? Who, who sent this to me? You know? And so what I did is I wrote this letter, right? And it said, and, and there's a little microphone in there, a little toy plastic microphone. It was really kind of funny. And it said, hey, I just wanted to pick up the mic, get it, and say that your success is inspiring. Please know that my uh, thanks is very sincere. So thank you. I hope to shake your hand in person one day because giants like you kept me going four years ago, which is so true. I said my first month at MLM four years ago was a bit of a disaster, but on, but the flip side calls that an education. So ha. At the start, we were in college, newly married, new city, no jobs, dead broke. I couldn't provide for my new bride, which greatly challenged my sense of manhood. To top it off, my wife started staying in bed all day for weeks. I finally got her to confess to me that she'd only been eating one meal a day so that I could eat and have energy in my classes. Holy insert expletive. Lost, I clamored for some way just to make sure that we could eat, much less stay in our overpriced apartment. In a flurry of desperation, I found out student loans were around the corner, but not available for four to six weeks. But I'm going to die in next week, was my dominant thought. Humbled, lost, beaten, I decided to call my dad, begging for an advance of money, which I'd pay back when the student loans came in. In a locked room, I asked him. There's a long pause. Son, no. If I give you this, you may not exhaust resources you didn't know you had. His exact words. Very wise. We both cried. Yet the fire in my gut to make this happen was insane and gave me huge edge. I really didn't know how we'd make it through those weeks. And I didn't know how, I don't know how we actually did make it through those weeks. But like a sprinter grasping at a single breath, I started trying to make money in any way I could think of. In three to six month rotations, I seemed to try everything. Stocks, options, residential real estate, commercial real estate, two summers of door-to-door sales, telemarketing, ebooks, freelance website building, diamonds, yep, smartphone insurance, affiliate marketing, internet traffic driving for Paul Mitchell schools, study, try, repeat. The pros, I was learning it far more on my own than any of my actual marketing classes. The cons, a little money came in here and there, but nothing, crap, Uh, but really nothing big, crap. Then one day, a buddy called me and said, this dude's going to help us make a bunch of money, and three-wayed me in. You know the MLM pitch. Reluctantly and pushed, I joined the MLM at the pleading my buddy and, fi- and at finding out that my wife was pregnant. I was pumped to have a kid, but terrified at how to pay the cost. Still broke. Ugh, MLM. If I'm going to do this crap, I'm going to tear after it. That was my honest thought. So I literally went door to door on the main street for, f- or on main street for five weeks. I recruited 13 people slash businesses. Dot, dot, dot. And they did nothing. I was constantly distracted in all of life because all I could think of was, holy crap, how do the big MLMers actually do this and really make money? 
That question became my pure obsession. Again, I hit the books, courses, podcasts, just like you guys know. In order to simply live, I joined the army in college, but got in trouble for sneaking in finance books and selling a lot and selling other soldiers on my MLM. None of them actually joined after all, though. Six months later, I was back at home. Yet again, it was 2 a.m., class in just five hours. I started reading an MLM ebook, as was routine at this point. How do I vet out people who aren't willing to hustle? How do I get people to come to me? How do I change my bait? But then it happened. Like a ray of light in a dark room, a single idea hit me between the eyes. It was one concept that changed my life and my family's. A concept that gave me the fuel and ammo to figure out the last piece, the missing link. I barely slept that night. That was three and a half years ago. Anyway, sorry to talk about myself so much. I'm glad my dad said no. Just wanted to say hi and mention how much I truly respect you for what you've accomplished and the real inspiration you probably didn't know you've been. Looking forward to that handshake. Anyways, that's the letter that I sent to him, okay? I sent that letter to them for the sole purpose of introducing myself, that's it. I'm not asking for anything. I'm not sending them to any link. I'm not telling them to go anywhere. I literally am just trying to get that individual to go, hey, this Steve Larson guy's kinda cool, right? And when you go, the reason I bring this up is because Right, I'm, I'm about to launch this product called Secret MLM Hacks, right? And you all know that. But I'm going out creating relationships before I ask people to buy. The problem that I had when I first joined MLM is that I went out and I did exactly what my MLM upline was telling me to do. They literally did not let me leave the room until I wrote a list of 20 of my friends and called them in front of them. It was, it, it seriously was the most awkward thing in my life. Like, Ugh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I, I know that there are damaged relationships because of those phone calls. And what was so challenging and what was so hard was I didn't know what else to do. There was nothing else to do. But the problem was that, I, I mean, I hadn't created a relationship with the person strong enough in that area, in the business area, right? They were my friends. They were my family. So, of course, there's a relationship. But it was out of context. They weren't wanting to join my MLM. They weren't actually wanting to actually go and 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 uh, be pitched on something, and it got really, really frustrating really fast. And so all I'm trying to say in the purpose of this episode is that when you go and you start to actually try and recruit people into your downlines, right? If you're doing it the way of, of calling people up, which is fine, I just don't do that. you know. Or if you're doing home meetings, which is fine, I just don't do that. Or hotel meetings, again, I, I don't, I just don't do those things. I I, I do it a different, you know, I, I auto, through the system that I built on my own. That's how I do it. And it works great. Um, uh, um, when you go out and you actually start to try and sell the product, when you're trying to launch your MLM business, don't spam people. Don't go out and, 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 and try and, I mean, it, it makes us feel, it makes my wife and I feel, and we get approached all the time to join MLMs. I'm, I don't want to join an MLM. I'm already in one and I love it. You know, that's why that's the reason I don't try and get you to join mine. You know, like it's not it's not like a it's totally a soft pitch. And that's how you got to look at it for for how you're approaching your own people as well. Uh, and so when you go out and you man, make a list of the people that you wish were in your MLM, your actual downline and start sending them cool packages, get their address, find it somehow, send them letters, send them cool stuff, send them things that are pattern interrupts. Don't just Start calling them over the phone and blast them all over the place. Don't go on, oh, do not go on Facebook and start saying how much you love working from home. Like, you just started most of it. Like, <laughs> you re- that your home office is your living room? Is that because you can't afford something else? Oh, I mean, you really don't have any cash flow? You know what I mean? I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to put salt in the wound. I'm just saying that's how it looks to everybody else. Like, everyone's calling the bluff on you. Everyone knows, everyone sees. And so, the easiest way to go about doing it. Create a list of the top 100 people that you wish were in your downline and then start creating relationships with that individual and ask yourself the question, how can I provide value for that individual before they even know that I'm in an MLM? That way, when it comes back around, there's going to be a time where you can bring it up and you can say, hey, look, I just want to tell you about it. It's totally cool. If you're not interested, though, guys, that same strategy is what I'm using on other people who I'm not even trying to get them into my MLM. It's just the, one of the ways we use to promote products because all it takes is a few of those people to say yes. They promote it to their followings, you know, the people that with their internet followings and, and it makes a ton of money. <laughs> and that's the way that we do it. It's exact same thing with MLM. And so that's all I'm saying is go, go you know, do exactly what the up on said. Write out a huge list of the people that you wish were in your downline. But my gosh, understand that 
most of them aren't going to join. Uh, you know, right, especially right off the bat. Um, you know, if at all, and that's fine. You got to mentally be uh, prepared for that. But second of all, go create the relationship first. Provide value. Provide real value for the individual. One example, real quick. And I'll end the podcast real quick. There was a guy who went out, and I could tell that I was on his list. Like he wanted me to join. Now I ended up not joining, but I was able to help him in some cool products. What he did was insane. He went and he bought one of my online products, and when he did it, um. He did it for the sole purpose of hiring an outside coder, which he did, who went and on his own dollar went and made all these improvements that I didn't even know that you could make to my current product. You know, this is a this is a side product. It's not my main one. It was over on the, you know, and he went and all he did is he just was like, hey, I hired this coder and he added these cool extra features in for you. And by the way, here it is. And also I made a whole really cool video startup guide to walk people through how to set it up so that you don't have to worry about it with your own support team. Here he's like, here you go. You can set it up. It's all yours. Totally for free. I was like, what the heck? Who are you? Are you kidding me? And, and you guys, that product still makes me a ton of money. You know how much value that individual has provided for me? Anytime he reaches out to me, I answer now. Amidst all the noise, amidst all the people that are out there trying to get me to do something for them, to, to promote a product, to join the downline, to buy their MLM, to do whatever, get samples, anything. Amidst all the people, when that guy says something, I know that he cares about me. I know he cares about my success as well. And you need to do that. You got to care about the success of the other person that you're trying to recruit in your downline. This like same exact, more than you may even be thinking, this is a relationship business. So go create that list, go get relationships with them. And then after you have the relationship and after you've provided value to the individual, then, then talk about your MLM. Then talk about the opportunity. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you. That's what I'm doing right now as far as the launch. Um, and uh, stay tuned to the next episode so you can see what's happening. You can follow the launch for this thing. It's pretty sweet. Uh, again, the reason I'm doing this is because I want you to be able to copy me and do it for your own downlines. All right, guys, talk to you later. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback for me. Do you have a question you want answered live on the show? Go to secretmlmhacksradio.com to submit your question and download your free MLM Masters Pack. 